What is up guys and welcome back to episode number 39 now of the Legion Addict Career Mode. A bit of a shorter episode for you guys today as we are now approaching the January transfer window. So what I want you guys to do, I have asked you to do it in the previous episodes and because I record this quite uh, frequently, I get a load of recordings done, then edit them out. Basically, I won't be able to do the comments that you guys say um, from probably yesterday's episode. So I'm going to try and keep it as long as possible before I have to record a new episode. And so that way I can take all your guys' comments on board look at them and decide what we're going to be doing in January. We have got a little bit of money to spend in terms of what the board has given me. You can see what we're doing on the screen right now. I think we uh, inquired about the likes of Ben Pearson because someone asked me to, to sign Ben Pearson a while ago now. It is. If you're still watching the series, that's for you. I have inquired about him. I will be looking at bringing him in. Someone else said Rashford as well, so we inquired about the Manchester United forward. It's very unlikely that we'll be able to get him in the side as uh, obviously being at Manchester United. They are the rivals. It's pretty damn unlikely that uh, Manchester United will let us sign the young man. I also looked at Ian Acho as well, the Manchester City Nigerian forward. He's been absolutely brilliant in real life for Man City and he could come over to Ellen Road and be our style striker here. But again, that is very, very tough to be able to do. I don't, I'm not expecting us to sign Rashford or Ian Acho. Ben Pearson's a more likely one for us. Uh, I haven't actually recorded in the next episode, but you will be seeing properly that will be the start of the transfer window. We do go into January here, but I didn't put any offers in for any players. I just basically inquired about them, showed you guys what I had in my shortlist to be able to look at them and stuff like that. And then what I'm going to do is once I record that episode, I will be looking at bringing in those types of players and whatever. And another thing to note as well, I am aware, guys, I speak extremely quickly. I'm going to try my best to keep it at a uh, pace in which you guys can understand what I'm saying. But if I do talk a bit fast, I apologise. It's just the way I've always been. I always speak quite quickly. So, yeah, apologies if you're sort of getting a bit confused when I'm making these videos and you can't quite que keep up with my commentary. But again, I genuinely do apologise for that. It's just the way I am. I do talk very, very quick. So, going to what you guys have been telling me, other than Rashford and Ben Pearson, someone else left a comment telling me to let take a look into the other leagues in terms of the Liga Nos and the uh, Belgian League, the Pro League for young talent, which I will be definitely doing, except what I kind of wanted to do with this series was get our talent from my youth academy and not have to really sign it into the club too much. I wanted to keep it a little bit authentic and get it through the youth. However, looking at what this guy said made a very good point. My next career mode that I'm going to be doing after this, which will hopefully this will be for half of FIFA 17, and then the second half of FIFA 17 before we go into the next one, I'm hoping to have a youth-only career mode up for that. So. I don't sort of want to use the youth only in this too much. And I, again, don't want to just be uh, getting my talent brought into the club. I want to kind of keep it offensive, but I don't want to use it too much because I don't want to spoil the next career mode that plans that I have here. Um, so he did tell me to look at the Pro League and Liga Nost, so that's what we will be doing in the uh, January transfer window as well. So if you've got any more suggestions, leave them down in the comments. If I don't see them by the time I've recorded the next episode, then I do genuinely apologise for that. It's as simple as the fact that I may not have had the time to be able to look at this video and record the next one in uh, that sort of time space in this one. So yeah, apologies for that one. Enough about talking about the transfer window and all of that, that stuff. You see here we have a game against Liverpool, which is a very, very tough game. However, they weren't doing too well in the Premier League. I think they were sat below even us, or there might have been two places. I can't quite remember. I think we were two places, or they were two places. There was definitely two places in it between us. And we actually took the lead in this one through Alex Iwobi. I mentioned a few episodes ago he couldn't keep his composure in front of goal, but he managed to do so here to give us a 1-0 lead in the 18th minute of this one. In all honesty as well, it was made by Joel Green. You saw the run that he had. He cut inside, and I was holding on to the ball for a long period of time, just waiting for the right pass to open up, and it did in the uh, in the form of Alex Iwobi, and he managed to smash that one into the uh, bottom corner of the goal. Shea Ojo should have made it 1-1, though, for Liverpool, as he had his effort blazed over the bar, but they did manage to make it 1-1. Nice work from Stuart and Dunn, the uh, two youngsters there for Liverpool, linking up, and Stuart gets in on goal, and I have to say, I'm a bit disappointed with uh, Alban Lafont there. He probably should have saved this effort. You're going to see it again in just a second. It was a really nice play, and it was poor defending, or poor defensively from me, but in all honesty, Liverpool just opened up my defence, and they uh, made the chance exceptionally well, I have to say. Nice bit of passing play. Dunn feeds the ball into Stewart, but like I said, could Alban Lafont have done slightly better with this? He gets a strong hand to it, but I'm not going to blame the goalkeeper completely. Again, it was probably my poor defence. However, I do have to say, he did get quite a good hand on that, so possibly should have saved it. But nevertheless, 1-1 in the game. I'd have taken a point away from Anfield. It's not an easy place to go. We should have got a uh, second goal in the game for ourselves. Lovely ball over the top, and Pablo Hernandez, what control that was to bring it down. But he couldn't match it with a good finish at the end of it, and our captain on the day... Unfortunately, didn't make the score too. And I have to say, though, the control, the ball over the top as well, from I think it was Alex Iwobi in the end. And if uh, Pablo Hernandez had scored that one, I'd have been over the moon with that. And 66 minutes into this one, Liverpool really should have had a second goal. For some reason, I think it was done. Tried to bring it down on his chest when he should have just gone for the header into the back of the net. Didn't try to do that. And in the end, we managed to clear a very, very simple cross. But it could have been much more dangerous for us. But 86 minutes into this, Joel Green involved again in this one. Gives it to Iwobi, who scored on the day. Gives it inside to Chris Wood. Weaker left foot. 
fires it across the goalkeeper into the bottom corner. Last season in the FA Cup, guys, we were losing the game in the uh, dying minutes of that one in the FA Cup to Liverpool. And I think it was a quarter final that one was. We scored in the 90th minute to take it to extra time. This time, we scored in the 88th to possibly pick up three points from Anfield. And looking at the way that Liverpool were doing the league, this is a sort of a game that was actually fairly uh, even, I have to say. In terms of league positioning, there was not much to separate us both on the day. So for me, any team could have won this one. And if we did manage to take three points away from Anfield, as good a result as it would have been in terms of form, it wasn't that unheard of, I have to say, because it was we were quite close in terms of league position going into this one. And we did manage to pick up the three points there. As you can tell, on the day, deserved win as we had more shots, more on target than Liverpool did. And obviously, had they have put away their chances, it could have been a different game. But they didn't manage to do that. And we did, on the other hand of that one, Chris Wood and Awobi on the score sheet on the day. Joel Green with one assist and I think Awobi got the other one in the end there. We did have a bit of training as well into this one as Alban Lafonts looking at going up to an 82. You can see me. I ended up putting Patrick Rhodes, one of the new signings that I didn't actually show you he signed. I, for some reason, forgot to show you in the last episode. He's only five foot seven though, so I'm not sure what my plan is going into this one with the forward. If I'll be looking at keeping him here at Leeds United or if I'll be looking to just grow him and then possibly sign him on for a bit of profit. Because at the moment, I'm sort of thinking about it this way. Um, if I'm going to stick to a two at the top formation, then it'll be completely fine at five foot seven. But if I'm going to go back to a four three two one at some point when we have a better side here at Leeds, do I want a five foot seven striker playing up, th up front for us? I'm not sure I do. So you can see there, I actually inquired about Marcus Rashford, and uh, Man Manchester United basically came back and said, "You ain't going to hope in hell's chance." of signing the young man, but I offered him a cheeky £4 million offer. No way they're going to accept that. I was just offering it just to be, uh, for a bit shits and gigs, really, just to see if they did accept it. But I'm not expecting them to accept it at all. But going back to Patrick Rose, I show you him as well. I do think in the, uh, the later stages of this episode, he's actually got a potential of 86 to 94. So looking at his potential and what he currently is at the moment, and with the fact he's only 15, I'm not sure if he'll grow... Um, a little bit more than five foot seven. I don't quite know how it works in terms of the youth academy. I used to know how it worked in the old FIFAs, um, but I don't know if it still applies in this one. So I'm not sure if he'll grow any more than five foot seven with the fact when I think, is it May update? I think that's when they grow um, once they hit 16 and stuff. So if he grows, we will be looking at a top class striker coming in here to Leeds and it will be through our youth academy system. So we may not need a striker in the long run, but we definitely need one for now in this January transfer window. So if you leave a comment on this video and I don't quite see it and I don't make it happen in this uh, January transfer window, just know I have seen it. It's just literally the fact is I've already recorded the episode once you've, this episode has already come out. So that's the only reason why it won't have been done. Um, like I said, I, I will have recorded that episode before the, well, well af, before this one has actually come out. So uh, once I see the comment, I'll have already recorded the episode. So there's nothing I can do about that point. But I may just leave a little bit of time in the January transfer window to be able to see your comments in this one. And then possibly do it towards the back end of the window. Maybe in the transfer deadline day. Who knows? But we did have a game here against West Brom for the second and final game of the episode. Like I said, it's a bit of a shorter one this time. Only two games in today's episode because of the fact we're in the transfer window. And I want you guys to basically give me comments on what you guys want me to do. So, um, or rather, like I said, if you leave a comment on this one, I will try my hardest to do it. Um, it may not be in the next episode because I will have recorded that one, but I'll try my best to do it in the episode after that if I possibly can. Six minutes into this one, though, we should have had the lead in this one. Because a lovely player on the left-hand side, gave it into Ronaldo Vieira. Vieira goes out wide here to Sacco. Sacco down this right-hand side, whips the cross into a dangerous area. And Sonny Mane Dakara in the side for the first time pretty much today should have headed his effort in the back of the net. Unfortunately, though, he headed over the bar and it was surely going to be 1-0 if he'd have managed to get that one on top. Target. He didn't get it on target and we were still left frustrated here. If you remember the first game we had against West Brom in the league, we actually ended up drawing it by a goal apiece. So I was pretty, uh, well, I was interested to see if we could get revenge on them here and try and pick up the three points. We have an effort here with Vernon Anita. A nice uh, block in the end by the wall, but I get the ball back with Anita. Power the strike goalwards, but a good save by Ben Foster in the West Brom goal. Kept the score uh, at nil nil in this one. And into the 90th minute, we had one more chance in the game as uh, I think it was Alex Moat, or it might be Costinha in the end, gets the strike away straight at Ben Foster in all honesty. And as you can see, we ended up drawing the game by nil and nil so only picking up a point from this one but we picked up four from a possible six today in today's episode which is very very good i have to say in terms of league position it won't have harmed us at all west brom though had zero shots in that game they played out for the draw and that's exactly what they got in the game so i was a bit frustrated at the fact they didn't really try and attack me but hey ho if they want to play out for the draw and they get the draw at the end of the day it's well played to them because they've uh, gone with their game plan and they've succeeded with it so 
Well played to West Brom um, in their game plan there because they did manage to hold me out to a nil-nil draw, especially at home as well. I was thinking we should have got a result out of that one. You can see there we have the first FA Cup game of the season coming up. As we look to retain our FA Cup uh, title, whether or not we'll be able to do that, you have to wait and see. You can see this is the shortlist of players we've got here at Leeds United. Let me know who you want me to sign. I will be only playing two games and episodes and that way... The episode that comes out, I will be able to record it on the next day and give you guys that one based on comments you leave in this episode. So this one is coming out on the Friday. I will be able to record uh, one for the Saturday. And then once that's recorded on the Saturday, I'll have so much time to be able to play it and get you guys another episode out. So what I want you to do is leave comments on who you want me to sign out of the shortlist that you'll be seeing. I offer a, an offer here for Anwar El Ghazi and you can see what I'm doing. Um, if I don't look at you, if I don't do what you've said in the comment, don't think that I haven't seen it. I have seen it. It's just literally I may have run out of time or I may not have enough money to be able to do what you guys have asked me to do. So hope you enjoyed this episode of Career Mode. As always, I have been Danny and I'm out. Adios.